Hey guys, welcome back. We we're gonna we're gonna be taking another look at some mystery garbage. Uh, yes, the Amazon variety. There's a, a nice little video that came out. We're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna take a look at the contents of that. But also, we're just gonna discuss and we're gonna use real examples of how to spend money correctly in Pokemon. Now, it is definitely a buyer's market. One would argue, uh, and uh, there's some sweet deals to be had. You can find all kinds of great deals everywhere. And those great deals are definitely not mystery products. So, uh, again, at best, mystery products are you're paying for gambling. Otherwise, if, if the contents were, the expected value of the contents were higher than the product itself, the person selling that crap would be losing money. I shouldn't have to explain that. They got to put the packaging. They got to ship it to you. They got to go through the time and effort of putting that crap in a bag, in a box, in a, in a socks, in a cox they got to put it in something they got to make the packaging they got to advertise it they got to pay fees selling that stuff to you it's it, there's money that's going to be tied up there that you're never truly going to get the expected value uh that you would just buying something outright now i know right, people are going to say the same they're going to say rattle but there's gambling there's gambling in in pokemon card packs yes there is but that's not an excuse to add 17 more layers on top of it to make it an even worse value are you reading me here now if if you have somebody that's new to pokemon cards that's just getting into this stuff and you see them dumping money please send them this video give them give them a, a kiss on the cheek and say hey listen you're wasting your money on this shit especially amazon amazon is like it it is completely out of control at this point in time the, the amount of garbage that's on there the amount of fake reviews the amount of absolute shade master 69s we got drop shippers that are we've seen it before drop shippers that are buying stuff from ebay selling it to unsuspecting mothers taking them out to dinner and leaving them with nothing but a but a reshipped ebay order <laughs> and then and then claiming that the item didn't arrive even if it does so Yes, it is. It's a bad spot. It, it, it's the same thing. I guess we should have had a Walmart page open here. The same Walmart. Well, I don't know why Walmart does it. I mean, they're probably doing it for money. But like the stuff that's not sold by Walmart should not be on the Walmart site. I don't know why they, they do that. Like they're making themselves look less reputable. When grandma goes on there and buys something and it's marked the hell up or it's some kind of sketchy bootleg shit that somebody was able to upload onto walmart.com.ca, whatever, uh, because Walmart just decided they're going to open open the floodgates. They're going to let third party sellers on there. I don't. Th please, Walmart, smart the fuck up. Get that off of there. But regardless, Amazon here, if you're buying mystery products on Amazon and you don't think you're going to get your dick ripped off, I got news for you. We got a perfect example right here. We have Riles McMeyer Pokemon. Check him out. Uh, a little, a little bit of a smaller channel, but uh, a pretty, pretty interesting video here. They, they purchased this. Gotta catch a mint only mint exclusively curated mystery pack. If you think at any point you're going to get something good out of this, you are absolutely lying to yourself. So a lot of the time you'll see they'll have like a big dick, sick, nasty stuff on the, oh, what is, oh my, hidden fates char, I can get a hidden fates charizard. No, you're, no, you're not getting any of this crap. I mean, th maybe they put one in there. That's if you're lucky. If, if they're feeling generous, the vast majority of the time, the images don't reflect what's actually in there. We've seen it before with people doing mystery packs and, uh, the photos that they're using for the mystery packs that they're claiming these items are inside, they don't even own the cards. It was it was photos of other people's cards. So do not get fooled by the, the images on the box. You're not getting any of that crap. We we got this mystery mystery pack here. Um, and even worse, uh, we have here, uh, a, they're buying reviews. So we've seen this before too. Uh, no, you are definitely not allowed to buy reviews. It says get a $15 Amazon gift card just for your review. Uh, we take a look here. We do a quick Google search for Amazon seller pay for reviews. Uh, and we get a whole lot of stuff saying we have had clear policies that prohibit reviews abuse, including paying for reviewing and so soliciting only positive reviews. It's illegal to buy reviews for Amazon, all that kind of stuff. We don't allow reviews that are created, edited, or removed in exchange for compensation. So this is, this is about as bad as it gets in terms of um, paying for reviews. Uh, because not only are they paying for reviews... They're they're only rewarding you if you give them a five star review. So they're they're not just just incentivizing you to leave a review. 
We've seen this with Liquid Marketplace. Uh, it's it's the the shadiest thing in the book. Unfortunately, a lot of this stuff, review bots, whatever you want to call them, it, it's kind of taken over Amazon to the point that like a lot of the items that have the highest reviews, you kind of you kind of can't take the reviews seriously because a lot of them are fake. It's unfortunate, but that's how it works when you let anyone and everyone sell on your platform. Uh, they'll put garbage on there. It'll be it'll be the cheapest. It'll be the highest reviewed because the reviews are all probably fake, that sort of thing. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's the the world we live in. So, um, how awesome is this? I think he shows the. Um, he might show the. Does he show the price? I think we can see the price here somewhere. It's like thirty five dollars for this uh, piece of trash. Here it is. Only gem, only minty. You see, there's they gotta show a Charizard. There's, I, I would be very surprised if anyone ever at any point pulls a Charizard out of this that isn't the, the original creator of this product. $35. Again, this is all my opinion. Maybe these are the sick, nastiest mystery packs of all time. We get a CGC card that comes out of this bad boy. Uh, it is a mystery. I, I guess um, they have like a, a little pull thing that's going to leave a bunch of residue on the case. So congratulations. Not only do you get a junk slap, but you get to remove this... Uh, this little slip here, uh, and then you get to use Goo Gone or whatever you can to uh, to remove the. Be careful, don't use like if you use acetone and stuff like that, it'll probably make it all foggy and disgusting. Uh, you'll have to find a good way to remove the glue off of that. So, uh, I do. This is a, do not be fooled. This is a thirty five dollar heat more uncommon from Battle Styles. Holy moly, that that is some. That, that is some I never should have been graded to begin with. Ridiculousness. So it, we're going to get into a lot of that stuff. Uh, he's a little bit confused because he, he doesn't know what the SGC is. Um, here, for comparison, I've been telling people the deals are out there. Go check out the auctions. Check out Rusty's auctions, TCA Gaming. Check out Z&G. Check out, check out your PWCC. We have like a Sunday auction hangout where we'll go in there. We'll look at auctions together. Uh, try, try not to bid against each other, um, that kind of thing. Just, uh, just a, a nice little hangout. Uh, the last, I mean, three or four, I guess, uh, Sundays, I've got some pretty sick deals. I ended up picking up one of these uh, for for less than the ones listed here. But uh, yeah, for for thirty five bucks, thirty six bucks, less than thirty five bucks, you can get a nice team up and pre release Charizard. Um, if you don't like the CGC case, I, I mean, I don't want cases in general. But I was able to pick one of these up, super cheap, uh, to uh, to crack it for the old the binder collection. That's the thing too. It depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for certain grades, if you're looking for certain grading companies, there's deals on that. But there's also a ton of deals on stuff that is very crackable. Uh, and we'll get through on how I price that, how I kind of look for those deals, uh, and one that I found that was sick nasty. So SGC, it exists. Um, typically, people that are grading Pokemon cards are not grading them with SGC because there's just the premium is not there. The premium is there with PSA, and 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 that's that's pretty much it. We had this weird scenario in the pandemic where everyone and anyone was grading everything in existence, uh, and PSA couldn't keep up to that demand. So then we had a lot of cards going to SGC. We had them going to MNT, that Canadian one, Mint grading. We had them going to everywhere, everywhere else. CGC was just a booming. Not so much now. Now it's mostly just one person apparently supposedly, in my opinion, uh, that is providing the majority of the um, cards that shouldn't be graded, that are being graded. And when I say they shouldn't be graded, I'm talking stuff that doesn't add value. There's a ton of stuff. It's a wake-up call for everyone that kind of just joined during the pandemic and then sat through it, and they're like, what the hell? Why is, why are, people are, people, it blows people's minds now that you can buy something that's like a PS, even a PSA 8, a high grade, like PSA 8, PSA 9, you can buy something like that, um, you get a good deal on it at an auction and voila, look, it's cheaper than a near mint. And all you got to do is remove the, the, that damn plastic off of it. So SGC, again, it's cheap. It's $9 grading. So I guess if someone wants to put something in the slab, someone wants to pretend that it's more valuable, please, for the love of God, do not spend $9 on a heat more, a non hollow heat more. I can just give you a heat more. I can give you one of the cases that I've cracked open. You can pretend that it's graded. It's not, it's not worth more than 35 cents just because 
and that's like bare minimum so we saw yes there are still some people paying some i'm assuming that this got paid for this hurts to look at for anyone that isn't familiar this is the mcdonald's collection 2021 that came out during the pandemic someone bought this yes it's a, a mint nine what the hell does that mean the, the card is not worth anything it's a beautiful card. It looks great in the binder set with all, with all the other cards. But there's no way anyone should be spending $15, $20 to put this in plastic. It's just it's just a waste of money. It's it's just there's I think even people that collect graded cards can can agree that this uh, no one should be putting this in plastic. I don't think anyone should be paying $14.40 for it either. This is not the hollow version. This is the the version that there's just plenty of them. This is something that like if I saw somebody and they were like, damn, I love that squirtle. Here, take one. If I can find it in my in my bulk boxes, in my four-row bulk boxes, because that's where it belongs. Or you can just buy one. To pay ten dollars for this bulbasaur. Again, it's the non-hollow. If it was the if it was the confetti boy, sure. I I, I kinda get it. Ten bucks, maybe that makes sense. It's your favorite Pokemon, whatever. Eight dollars forty cents for the non-hollow Charmander. I was looking at this and I'm just like, there's no way someone's gonna pay for this. You are, what are you buying? So here we go. 333 listings as low as eight cents. Uh, market price 49 cents. Okay, so let's pretend we pay market for it. We pay 50 cents for this bad boy because we're going to round up. Uh, <laughs> 10 cents, 32. 32 cents market price. So this is the kind of thing. It's just like the stuff that shouldn't be graded that ends up being graded. There was a lot of that, a lot of newbie stuff, a lot of stuff maybe people thought were it was a good idea to grade it. Maybe this was like, I mean, it is blue label stuff. So maybe this was like pandemic, someone trying to like grade this as fast as possible uh, to be the first one to have it. But like, please, please do, please do not spend $15. Plus you're going to pay to ship it to yourself. Do not pay fifteen dollars for these. I don't. I don't. Maybe if it has like the super premium golden whatever the hell you want to call the new CGC label, and you're like a CGC diehard or something, maybe then you spend ten dollars on it. But please, please, guys, heat more here. Six hundred and seventy-five listings as low as one cent. Market price three cents. This should never be put in a case. It, uh, it, it is hard to justify putting this thing in a top loader. I have it double sleeved that the sleeves that I put around this thing are more expensive. The one binder slot and the two sleeves that I put on this thing in my battle styles binder are far more expensive than the card itself. What the hell? Who graded this? And was it, was it the person like, I don't understand it. I don't think even when battle styles when battle styles came out that it made any sense to pay I don't know what their grading prices were at that point in time, but let's pretend that they were also nine dollars. You're gonna spend nine dollars on a card that's three cents. Okay. You can you can check the prices on Troll and Toad as well. Uh usually when I'm trying to like cross reference cross reference something, um we can get the uh, we can get the reverse for thirty five cents. I mean, at least if it was the reverse, maybe maybe I no, it still doesn't make sense. Please, guys, common sense here. If the card is not worth as much as the grading fee, it probably shouldn't be graded. And how it would ever sell? I mean, that's the thing. That's probably why it's in a mystery pack. It makes a whole lot of sense that it's in a mystery pack because somebody's just trying to dump graded cards on people that don't know any better and they're just excited to have a, a thick plastic thing on top of something that's worth nothing. Use code at rattle5 on Troll and Toad. Save yourself 5%. Uh, it doesn't apply to the uh, the Evo merchants, but it does apply to everything else. Pre-orders, singles, everything that has this Troll and Toad. Uh, that, anything that's sold directly from Troll and Toad. Much appreciated for everyone that has been using it. I do have the link tree with a bunch of discount codes. Um, with smart places to shop, I mean, you still have to not buy the McDonald's non-hollows for $15. Uh, if you do use like the PWCC and stuff like that, or eBay auctions, you still need to look up the prices. You can do it. I believe in you. Uh, take some time to learn how to look up prices, see if it's a good deal. Don't get caught up in auctions. That's the secret. The secret to auctions is don't care if you win. PK stole it from me, but I'm stealing it back. <laughs> Don't care if you win. 
if you don't win it. If it's a set card, it doesn't matter if you win. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you win because there will be another copy. So unless you're getting a sick, nasty deal that you're happy with, don't. Just don't buy it. Don't bid. Don't bid anymore. Let it go. I haven't seen Frozen, but I'm, somebody's singing it right now, I'm sure. We got PWCC. So here's an awesome example of an awesome card that I won last night. This bad boy, Blaziken EX. Sick, nasty. I think it was like 60 bucks. It was like 80 with buyer's premium. Uh, so be aware with the buyer's premium, with the amount that it's going to cost to ship to you, that kind of stuff. Take that all into consideration. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is a, it's an eight. And guess what? Eights are sick. I love eights. They're perfect. They are awesome for cracking for the binder. And we got a good deal. So if we go back, we could take a look at TCG Player. Uh, there's no near mint ones available right now, only a Japanese copy. Uh, we look at the last couple sold. Uh, one in 11, 21, 23 for $125. Uh, and then we have one 12, 26, 23 at the end of the year there uh, for $225. So an $80 Blazik and EX seems like a pretty damn good deal to me. I shouldn't, I, I didn't, but I should have also checked on eBay to see if there's anything that was inexpensive. Um, but for this price, I can't imagine that there's any any better options or somebody would be. Typically, TCG Player is going to be the cheapest place. Uh, they don't have any available, so that's uh, that's a little bit of a sign. So we have the $125 one, and they do have pictures, which is nice. You, if you're selling anything that's $100 plus on TCG Player, you probably want to have pictures just to avoid uh, any conflict with uh, with customers. This one's got a little bit of edgy edgy wedgy stuff going on. And that was the $225 one. Um, and then even, uh, this is a nice little way to, uh, if you go to Troll and Toad uh, and you take a look at something, even if it's not in stock, usually it'll have a price there, $175. So it's hard to say if it will be $175 once they do stock one. Uh, but it's not in stock. Uh, they offer to buy them. So if you look at buy list, if you're getting stuff for under buy list from like game stores, from Troll and Toad, from TCG Player, whatever, um, if, if, if you're getting it for less than buy list, you're probably doing pretty good. So they have the sell to us for $113.75. Uh, that might be like with the website credit bonus. So we did good. We did pretty, pretty damn good on that. And yes, you're not going to get a deal on everything ever. Sometimes people are going to fight you on certain items and you just let, you just let them slide. You let them go. Uh, you move on to the next. The thing with the consignment services that I kind of, that I really like is the fact that if you do get a really good deal, uh, you don't run the risk of the seller canceling. But I mean, that's kind of the risk that you run anyway with like auctions, uh, for the most part. For and it's not to say you shouldn't ever bid on eBay auctions because you're afraid that the the seller's going to cancel. But there are a lot of sellers that will cancel especially new ones that will they'll list stuff in auction format and they don't understand how an auction works that they're not guaranteed to get a certain price if they don't put a reserve on it, but then eBay charges them to put a reserve on it. So then they don't want to pay that, but then it sells for too little. Uh, it will, it, it is a demerit on their part, but again, it's, it's just, it's an, it's an extra little bonus, uh, to, to going and bidding on like the, uh, the consignment service stuff rather than, rather than just random auctions. But either one works. Uh, it's been working great. The deals are great. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited that, uh, that Pokemon's kind of returned to a normal state, that the deals are there, uh, that you don't have to be too concerned about, uh, the, uh, the prices going up or going down. Um, a lot of stuff is still probably coming down a little bit and there's exceptions to, to all of that. So do check the prices, do check what they sold for before, do check if something just skyrocketed in price. Uh, this is probably like way up from, from where it used to be. Again, a lot of it is probably not going to retrace all the way back to what it was in 2016 or something like that. Uh, but uh, if you can get stuff back in around where it was in like 2018, 2019, uh, that's another good indicator. And you can use, uh, there's PokemonPrice.com uh, that'll show like PSA uh, sales and all different grades. So you can get a good feel for like, hey, where did it spike? Where does it have to come down? back down to for it to to be reasonable um yes the stuff should go up in value over time but if anything spikes super duper hard be a little bit weary that uh that it might come back down set cards are available almost all of them some of the really exclusive stamped stuff like that maybe that's a grab it while you can but uh 
again, don't uh, and and stay away from the stuff that everyone's chasing after, if you can, unless you can get it like really reasonable. It, it, it you're gonna you're gonna thank me later. Uh, not that it ever it doesn't like backfire, but n you know, ninety percent of the time, uh, you want to avoid uh, hopping on the hype train if you can. Hopefully, this was helpful. Uh, and it was a little bit different, a little bit. Uh, again, I've I've been hard on the uh, guys. It, we're in value town, and if you're not getting the best value, then what are you doing? And that, not to blame anyone for if you want to open some packs, open some packs. It's not good value. Uh, if you wanna, if you need the mystery pack, make sure that it's a credible mystery pack. I still, it's still icky in my opinion. I still think you can spend your money on better things. Uh, but uh, again, I, I can't really, can't really criticize. I do like to open booster packs. It is fun, uh, especially while they're while they're cheap, while they're available, while it's the new, while it's the new set. The new releases are a, a big part of of. Uh, at least my fun or my enjoyment in the hobby, seeing all the new cards, seeing the new Pokemon, all that stuff is, it's fun. But also at the same time, you want to get good value for your box. Uh, and uh, just remember, like your collection, everyone's like, how do you get a good, oh, your collection is so good. How is it so, so snazzy? Uh, and it's not because uh, like I necessarily have a jillion dollars that I can pump into it. It's not because I was in the, because I was in the hobby earlier. A lot of it has to do with like there's no like people focus too much on like the hindsight aspect. Like oh, if only I was collecting since '99 and I never stopped. Well, yeah, I can say the same thing. Like I I I stopped, but I came back, and it has a lot to, more to do with the fact that uh, you stay with it, you stay persistent, you you learn it. You need to learn it. I know a lot of people don't want to learn it. You need to learn it. You need to stick with it. Time in the hobby. Don't burn yourself out. Um, don't empty your pocketbook all at once. People go too hard. They get bored of it. They get burnt out after a year. Um, stay with it. Stay consistent. Uh, do different things in the hobby that allow you to enjoy the hobby without burning out. And uh, yeah, make some, some cool friends. There's lots of them. Join the Discord. You can make some there. See you next time. Bye.